Men, make DNA a conversation in your relationship and marriage. Married women are the new Ashawo. <laughs> this video is going to offend a lot of people because I'm going to be opening up a canker worms, secrets. Whenever you see me talk, I talk with fact. I don't just bluff. Don't forget, my name is Okoro, Blessed and Kiroka, and I'm popularly known as Blessed CEO, your number one most controversial certified relationship and mental expert. Stop looking at me like that, that married woman. You know what I'm saying is true. I feel for a lot of innocent men because women are very emotional beings. Many of you men are not the biological father to your children. Why? Because the woman is bleeding on you. Because she's trying to take revenge of what her ex did to her. Because she's in love with money and her ex does not have money. One silly reason or the other, that is why women have sex with another man, get pregnant and hang it on another man. That is the height of abomination and atrocity. And I would not condole it. A lot of people are going to say a child is a child. Yes, a child is a child. But do you know the emotional torture a man goes through when you have deceived him for years? For decades? Making him believe that he is the father to these children? Do you know how you are going to shatter him when he finds out that these children are not his? You're going to make him question his what? Make him question his manhood. Was I not good enough? Did I have health issues? Was I not productive enough? Could I not satisfy her enough? And one thing that kills a man faster than HIV is when you rob his ego. When you rob that ego, that is what is called disrespect. Men love respect. Men love to be treated like king. So the moment you do that, you have taken his ego from 100 to zero. You have robbed him in the mud and used him to clean the soil. Let me tell you something, man. Women are very dead. Men are not wicked because they are shallow. Men are like big babies. They just act physically. They just want to have fun. They just want to come. Women are very intentional. They think and program everything that they do. Before a woman cheats, decides to hang a DNA on you, she don't think her. She don't reason her. She don't plot. She don't plan her. Yes. It's an intentional act and it's an evil act. Many married women are guilty of it. Let me tell you something. So many women who are prostitutes are hiding under the act of marriage. And they are actually disrespecting that entity, that beautiful space called marriage. Giving it a very bad name. Just because a lot of you men do not know how to make choices. You are following your you are following breasts, you are following pretense because a lot of you men are not dead. So you will pick a Jezebel, you will pick a Delilah. And put her in your house. And she will show you the same thing that she showed Samson. By babbing your head. And taking everything that makes you strong. And makes you a man. Learn to make DNA conversation a regular conversation. Let it not be something that is an insult. The moment you meet a woman. Start to talk DNA. The same way a girl is pregnant. And talks about her pregnancy. The way, same way she runs tests. The same way you guys do HIV tests. The same way a woman cannot get pregnant and you can go to the hospital and run various tests. DNA is very important. It should no longer look like a crime. Oh, baby, me, you don't trust me. I trust you. If I trust you 100% and I have my DNA, I'm going to trust you 200%. There is nothing wrong in having clarity. Nothing, absolutely nothing wrong. Let somebody not guilt trip you. Or use emotional blackmail to say, oh, baby, it's because you don't love me, you don't trust me. Trust has to be tested. It is when it is tested and approved. That is when honesty, loyalty comes in. If I don't test it, I cannot trust you. Don't let anybody black... Save money for DNA. Save money for DNA. As they begin, they come. Run your DNA. The same way they run your child birth certificates. Run your DNA. The women we have in these generations are prostitutes. Hiding under marriage. Hiding under wedding bounds. They no longer have fear because there are no penalty for the things that they do. You see them saying, what about a man? What about a man? I am not here to talk about a man. I am here to talk about you 
who took that marital vow, who took that ring and said, I want to be with this man. A lot of you knew that that man was a bloody cheat. You knew that he was a liar. You still took your head inside the marriage. Most of you snatched that man from another woman. Most of you saw that man in a brutal. Most of you saw him living a wayward life. You trapped him down. Right? I'm not here to talk about men or to make excuses for them. Whether I'm talking about you who decided to be committed to a man. Keep your commitment. If you're tired or you think that a man is misbehaving, get out of the marriage. Do not stay there and contaminate and mess up that entity and give it a bad name. A lot of young people are afraid to get married because of what you are doing there. A lot of young people are seeing you as a married woman with your two ring, your two fat ring, jumping from hotel to hotel, sleeping with small boys. You think young girls don't see you? You mess up the entity of marriage. As they see you, you mess up their mind. The young ones begin to emulate you. Look at you as a married woman. Just because Jesus Christ has come and Christianity has come, and they have been telling you that Jesus will come, Jesus will come, and he has not come. And you know it might take another 1,000 years or 2,000 years for Jesus to come. You know that there is no penalty for that thing you're doing. If it was in those days, you know how mad your heart would have striked you. You know they would have buried you alive. You know you would have died. You would just fall down there or you and the man for God. There are penalties for this abomination. They will ostracize you. They will burn you. They will bury you alive. That was why women respected themselves. In this generation, women are spitting on that entity called marriage. If you know you're not ready to marry, remain single. I know society is pressuring you. I know your biological clock is ticking. As your biological clock is ticking, you should be able to discipline yourself. If you're not a disciplined woman, remain single. The single ladies are now even more disciplined than the married people. The single ladies are now the one hustling, trying to put food on their table, trying to bring something to their table. The single ladies are now the one who drive out every day, hustle and come back to their house, lie down and sleep and go and hustle. You that is a married woman with children, you are busy jumping up and down. You are, a single lady now goes out off her phone, sleep, go to bed, nothing like double dating. A single lady is now disciplined, loyal even to herself. You that is married. At night you are sneaking like snake while you are lying beside your husband. As your husband goes to work to hustle, you jump looking for a prick to sit on top. Why did you marry? Why did you not remain on the streets? Why did you marry? If you know you do not have self-control and you have not learned discipline, why did you not remain on the streets? Why did you enter into a man's house to come and frustrate him? Contaminate your lineage. Now, I'm going to say this with every authority. I am not here to talk about men. I am here to talk about women. Enough of that nonsense comparison. And what about a man? What about a man? What about a man? If that comparison is there, marry yourself. Marry yourself or remain single. If you don't want anybody to take authority to you or you want to be equal, you want to be rubbing shoulder, you want to be, you want to be an ogre, marry yourself. Stay single, control your life, knock anybody you want to knock, nobody will ask you a question. Marry yourself. Stay with yourself. That is the beauty about singlehood. The beauty about singlehood is that you enjoy your own freedom. You will do anything you want to do. The moment you say you want to settle down, you have disciplined yourself to be committed to somebody. You are a woman. You are a woman. There is no penalty you. There are more consequences for all this nonsense you are doing. You get to a certain age now, you start to look for who is pushing you up and down. Nobody's pushing you. There's the consequences of the life that you lived. I am here to warn you. Stop that nonsense that you are doing. If you know you're not ready to stay in one place, it is big prick, big prick with vein that is still hungering you. Go back to the single market. Stop this, this ingrating, a bit, this, this waiting, waiting, the place of marriage. Stop contaminating the, the, the sacred place of marriage. You young man, Finished man, you finished man because of Toto, because of big breasts. We do DNA, make DNA a conversation the same way you are asking a lady, What are you? What can you bring to the table? Can I see your nude? When you are having those conversations, bring up DNA. Let she know that you are going to do DNA for your children. Bring up DNA, very important to avoid her dying, to avoid BP, to avoid you dying young, to avoid you closing your generation, to avoid you being a bitter man. To avoid you being a toxic man. To avoid you bleeding on other women. Do DNA. Run DNA on all your children. These women. Hmm? Now I shall with their eyes. Marriage does not stop them. Marriage does not pin them. Marriage does not clamp them. Even pregnancy does not. A wayward woman is a wayward woman. 
woman that is not disciplined is a woman that is not disciplined. And that's period.